Hey, Rick. Sure. I have a, I have a, a, a question for you. The, um, oftentimes when I'm in the process with my clients and they're getting different calls and, and they start dealing with their lender and start dealing with their insurance company, all that stuff, they come back to me and they go, what insurances do I need? <laughs> what are they all? Don't I already have insurance? Um, can you give us a quick run through of all the different insurances and what they mean and what they're for? for, for sure. For so the, the first uh, type that you're likely to come across is uh, the insurance that protects the lender in the when you're doing a high ratio purchase. So uh, anything less than 20% down, you're going to require uh, this insurance, which protects the lender in the event. So it's of like the default. CMHC insurance. That's the CMHC or the Sajin. Uh, right. You might have it as Genworth on your contract because they used to yeah. be called Genworth. Uh, or Canada uh, guarantees. Uh, so th those are the, uh, th they're all the same uh, cost. Uh, it's just whichever one the lender happens to use. Um, so yeah, that's uh, usually about 4% of the, uh, the amount of the mortgage, uh, but it's amortized over uh, however long, the mor well, if it's insured nowadays, it would be 25 years would be the maximum amortization. Right. So the costs are spread over the, the length of the mortgage. Uh, but of course you're paying interest on that. Uh, so you can avoid paying that insurance, but you have to have at least 20% down payment in order to do so. So uh, that, that is an expensive coverage, but you only have to pay it once. Uh, and it does usually get you a cheaper interest rate than if you're doing conventional mortgage, but it's not a huge discount. Because the risk is lower for the lender. To, well, to, exactly. Uh, exactly. The lender knows that if they have to do a power of sale because you're not making your mortgage payments, uh, if they're out any money after the power of sale, they can make a claim on the insurance. So, so lender, that insurance well, is to protect the lender. It's nothing to do with you, right? It, it doesn't protect yeah, you. Yeah, it's just the, the only benefit to you is you don't have to have 20% down to get into the market, which, you know, with uh, the way real estate prices have been going until very recently, uh, waiting another year to buy the property was going to cost you more than the cost of the insurance anyways, exactly. plus you can rent that whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yes, it's there to protect the lender, not for the buyer. Right. Uh, second type of insurance that you're going to come across, uh, all lenders will require that you have fire insurance on the property. Uh, so, uh, and they, they want the replacement value of the property. So if the place burns down. So they, that's in your house insurance. Yes. Uh, and they will usually require that uh, they're named in the insurance policy. So uh, that if the house burns down, uh, you know, they can, they're not going to be out the money that they want you. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if you have a comprehensive insurance policy, then that will include the fire insurance. Yes. Uh, but you don't require comprehensive insurance. Uh, it's probably a good idea. Uh, to have comprehensive insurance, uh, but that's a discussion you need to have with your mortgage or sorry, right, your, exactly. uh, insurance broker. Um, but yes, as a bare minimum, you must have the fire insurance on the so, property. And it's a condition of the mortgage that you keep that fire insurance in force. If you let that lapse uh, without replacing it, then you are in breach of your mortgage and they could force you to pay your mortgage out <laughs> right away. Buy it, buy it out. So we've got the CMHC insur uh, insurance protecting the uh, the lender. We've got the fire insurance protecting the lender. The, the rest of the house insurance protects you, the owner. Mm -hmm. And there is another insurance, right, that we want to talk right. about. Well, I mean, I should say the fire insurance also protects you, the borrower, because of sure. course... But uh, yeah. I'm just thinking about the lender having to be protected in there. Because, exactly. I mean, it's serious it, enough if it'll if you can default your mortgage over it, right? So, exactly. Um, uh, so it's a and, and then that and, and that's something to look at, especially if you're looking at remote properties. Some yeah. uh, if you're too far away from a fire station and or fire hydrants, you can't get fire insurance. So right. how are you going to get a mortgage? We talked about that on a, on a, on another on another video. You're right. And the yep. properties, and then there is the mortgage itself. There's an insurance you yes. can put in the mortgage itself. So there's mortgage life insurance. So yes. every lender is required to offer it, uh, as long as you're not too old to qualify. Right. Uh, you you have to be offered mortgage life insurance from the lender. Yeah. Uh, there's a mortgage protection plan from Manulife uh, is one that I commonly offer. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's 
not a requirement. Uh, it's a good idea to have some sort of life insurance coverage on it because, uh, and or disability coverage, yeah. or sometimes it's critical illness insurance. Uh, because of course, one of the biggest reasons that people lose their property is because, you know, one of them dies or becomes disabled. So uh, this can help protect you in those situations. Now, having said that, it's not the best coverage. You're better off to speak with a insurance uh, broker uh, that does life insurance. Uh, this could be a different insurance broker than the one that does your car and fire insurance. Uh, and but, you do that as well along, along yeah, with- Yes, uh, I'm a certified financial planner and okay. I'm life insurance licensed. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I also do investments. So I can help you come up with your down payment uh, through investments, but uh, Sorry, I digress. Uh, so the life insurance that you can get directly from the life insurance company is often a far better value than the mortgage life insurance. Uh, the government says that the lenders have to offer you mortgage life insurance. They don't say they have to offer you a great deal on it. So it's another profit center uh, often for the lenders. Well, I have found that that the lender one costs more money, but even worse than that also, or even if it's a couple of pennies less, is not worth it because... Um, you could take a life insurance policy out for 500000 but if you only got 100000 left owing on your house, that's all you get back from them at the time that you need that money. Oh, well, th- this could be a whole discussion yeah. with, with the, the shortfall. But with a separate life insurance, yeah. whatever you yeah. pay, you got the whole thing. And I just want to mention here from a point of estate planning and family planning, if this is a family and one of the partners pass away or the with the bread earner pass away and you got the children there uh, and the spouse and at least then you can ensure the mortgage will be paid off in full um you know and that wouldn't be one thing they'd have to manage during the time of grief so from that point of view it is kind of nice knowing that you had a five hundred thousand dollar policy with uh, a lender Mm -hmm. and you've got a five hundred thousand dollar policy um privately separate from that so you know the bread winner passes away if you got the one with the bank and you're only owing a hundred thousand, the bank will pay get that hundred thousand yeah, that... extra money for you. But if you have a private lender, the bank will get a hundred thousand. You'd get the other four hundred thousand for your living. Uh, well, exactly, like- and uh, I should mention as well that uh, so that they will pay out whatever is remaining on the mortgage, oh. uh, but they pay it directly to the lender. So you don't get to just keep paying your mortgage and use that money for burial costs. That's right. Or you That's know, continue, point. Yeah. Uh, you know, buying groceries and paying your utility bills and things right. like that. Yeah. So it's you probably if you don't have any other life insurance, you definitely need more coverage than just for the mortgage. So of it's a really yeah. good idea to do a needs analysis and uh, determine what an appropriate amount of life insurance would be. Uh, but uh, yes, I and mean, we can get them in touch with you on that. And and for the insurances on the house, I just want to throw in this bonus at no extra charge. And that is for the ones that have a home with a tenant in it. Please make Mm. sure your tenant also has tenant insurance. So it covers the contents in the home and and any damage they would do there. So um, I think that's all the insurances, right? Uh, Yeah, those are the the three ones that uh, I'm familiar with. I no mean, wonder people get confused, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of insurance. Yeah, well, I mean, you can get into flood insurance, which isn't yep. often included in comprehensive True. policies, yep. but this is getting a bit beyond my, uh, <laughs> my area of expertise. But uh, Thank yes. you. We have all yeah. the insurances covered. That's amazing. Thank you, okay. Rick. Talk okay. to you soon, dear. Take care. Have a good one, Sharon.